Да ну все, боже, беги! Бери! Да! Боже мой, я ж ты птица, да! Блин! Домохладный! With air sirens going off. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, how's it going? I'm Jimmy. Okay. Альона, Альона Сілка. Загалом я родом ще з Луганську, це на сході України місто, котре було окуповано ще в 2014 році. У 2014 році я була окупована російськими військами під приводом того, що вони визволяли російськомовних. Коли я, будучи на той момент ще 12-річною дитиною, як і моя сім'я, як і все місто, спокійно, більш не спокійно розмовляли там російською. Це був просто привід, а не більше. Так само було і з Донецьку. І ось у 14-му році я ще дитиною зі своєю родиною. Дуже важко, але ми знайшли, де нам прихиститись. Ми зупинились в Харкові. І тільки ми якось... Ми просто почали будувати своє життя. Заново, можна сказати. Я там закінчила школу, а мій брат пішов до школи. Я закінчила там вже ж коледж художній. І мої батьки почали якось приходити в себе. В нас почали з'являтися гроші, ми почали жити як нормальні люди. Навіть трохи краще, ніж нормальні люди. І так було 8 років, ось до 2021 року, коли Росія знов прийшла мене визволяти. Визволяти мене від нормального життя. І так, я Нікіта, учусь в УКУ, мені 18, і все змінилось 24 числа, як почалась війна. Я із Одеси з моєю сім'єю, ми проснулися в 6 утра дзвінка моєго друга, який сказав, що просипайся, почалась війна. За час ми зібралися і вже виїхали сюди. Від якихось гарних спогадів про, можливо, як кажуть, кращі роки мого життя студентські. І від усього цього, мабуть, мене прийшли визволяти. Від нормального життя. І мені довелося їхати далі. Зараз я переїхала до Львова. Дуже гарно, що в мене було кому мене прихистити. І якщо б ні, я не знаю, що було б. Мене звуть Павел Богдан. Я з Бердянська. Загалом я тут вчуся. На спеціальності комп'ютерні науки перший рік. Я з Бердянська. І коли почалася війна, так сталося, що я був тут через очі навчання, а моя матір була за кордоном. Проте мій батько, який зараз є завідуючим хірургічним відділенням, був у Бердянську. І коли почалися ракетні удари по місту, також були по військовим частинам, він оперував поранених військових. Зараз залишається там. Насправді, це дуже страшно для мене. І я б хотів би, щоб він поскоріше виїхав. Але я розумію, що він несе дуже важливий тягар. Тобто ви маєте сім'ю в Маріуполі? Так, моя батька. Моя батька є в Маріуполі зараз. And uh, she, uh, she's a doctor and she wor worked in the pregnancy center. The pregnancy center that was bombed by the Russians? Yes, that, that 
and uh, we have no contacts with her until now and uh, the, everything that uh, information that we receive from there is just from uh, people with whom we are acquainted with mm -hmm. and they tell that they have seen her and she is alive okay that's good that's good that she's alive seen um how have you seen this war affecting your students um well, I can't say about all of the students because, well, first of all, I'm mostly I'm not working with the undergraduates. I'm working with the uh, business school community, with the alumni, and alumni is volunteering. Someone is in, in the army already from our alumni. They are fighting. Uh, if we are talking about the undergraduate students, so as you could see today in Center Shaptiski, they are volunteering. Uh, they are building logistic. Uh, they are working with cargo, with the humanitarian cargo, tactical cargo, things like that. And um, they, will have, they will have, they already have huge responsibility. If someone from them could consider them still as a kid, you know, as a youngster, young, young child, so now all of them are adult, doesn't really matter how old they are. They're adult people and they have a lot of responsibility for their country, for their families and for their lives. And definitely they will have a great expertise to work under great pressure, which I hope will give them uh, one day when we will, war, will we, when we will win this war, so they will have a great competitive advantage on the international labor market. They can work under the pressure. So this is our things. Uh, I'm trying to be optimistic now. Uh, but the price is huge for that. Of course, the price is huge. They lost their childhood. Basically. Hmm? They basically lost their t uh, college years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could, you know, they could uh, hang on the campus, to go to a nightclub, have some beer, but, but, but now no. But still they're alive, you know. A friend of mine lost his five years old kid on this world already. Wow. He was shot. Uh, he was shot? He was shot, he and grandfather. My friend has his father, father-in-law with his son, was trying to escape from her son, and he was shot by Russian soldiers. Uh, on the, on the blog post. So what the on a what? Yeah, they just start, someone from from the soldiers. Uh, he wasn't my friend wasn't there, so uh, he don't know what actually happened. But they they was shooting to the car. They was moving in the car and and uh, uh, and two people who were sitting in the back of the car actually grandfather and grandson, five years old. They was killed. It happened two days ago. Wow. In Mariupol? Uh, no, Kherson. Hmm. In Mariupol, much more worse stories they have. Yeah. I have a lot of friends from Mariupol, uh, and, um, and some families of them are blocked now over there. And they, they don't have a contact with them for, um, for many days. Wow. For many days. And, you know. It's, uh, I, I, I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine. Мої батьки до останнього казали, що ми нікуди не поїдемо, що ми не хочемо кудись їхати, що ми тут все пересідемо, але це було до того моменту, поки над нашим домом не пролетіла бомба. Вже наступного ранку, в п'ятій годині ранку, ми були на чемоданах, та наш батько сказав мамі, типу, їдьте. Куди? Просто їдьте туди, де більш-менш мирно. Ми поїхали, а батько залишився. Батько залишався там у найстрашніші часи війни в Луганську. Ще це вже, я, я так нагадаю, це не 21-й, це 14-й рік. Це 8 років тому. Він залишався там, він був таксистом. Він розвозив людей під бомбардуваннями а, за гроші, які вони мали, типу. Він не ставив якусь шалену ціну, як це робили, робили більшість, він просто...
скільки, люд... скільки люди мали, стільки вони йому і давали. От. І він вивозив їх до вокзалу чи до автостанції. І було дуже сильно багато історій про те, як мій батько як його підрізав БТР, як йому намагалися продати зброю, як, визво... як люди, що приїхали його ніби визволяти, розповідали прекрасні історії про те, як вони замочили сьогодні укропи. Укропи українців. українці. Так, да, так укропом росіяни укропом називаються. Так, так. Укропом назвали Україну. Укропами росіяни назвали Україну. Ось, як вони мучили укропів. Ем... Було багато історій про те, як його е, колеги, як він просто роз'їжджався зі своїм колегою, наприклад, та через е, там, декілька годин, годин його вже знаходили мертвим, тому що він попав під обстріл. По-моєму, батько стріляв. Тобто він е, пережив дуже багато дійсно страшних речей, та коли в один момент він їхав до Харкова, в нього була зламана машина та 300 гривень в кармані, в кишені. Та... Але його Харків, як, як можна так сказати, боїв. Він знайшов тут знайомих, вони його прихистили, вони йому допомогли. допомогли. Якось стати на, на ноги. Та потім вже ми під'їхали туди із родиною. Почалось нове життя. Ми якось намагалися, якщо можна так сказати, продовжувати жити, тому що ми е, втратили все, що мали до цього. Дім, е, не знаю, якщо можна так сказати, деяких друзів. Деяких родичів навіть, саме з цього приводу. Та ми просто намагалися почати все спочатку, та в нас вийшло. В нас... Ми вже мали купувати квартиру. В нас... Ми гарно харчувалися, якщо можна так сказати. Тобто просто ми почали жити краще. Навіть ніж ми жили у Луганську. Але то не надовго було. Тому що знов нас прийшли визволяти. Визволяти знов з бомбами, знов через кров, знов розказуючи про те, які ми. Я не знаю, що сказати далі. So I'm here at Lviv University, um, Catholic University, doing some interviews with uh, people that survived the genocide. And this gentleman just knocked on our door and this is his message for me, his warning for me. Yes, we have to leave this place because it is not safe here, because we have a glass wall over there. So we have to move to the safer place where there are flat walls and we will be not in danger. Not in danger from what? From Russian shelling, bombarding, rockets, missiles. That's, and how old are you? Uh, 18 years old. And you're a freshman in this university? Uh, no, I'm a second year student. You're a second year. You're a second year. And this is the, one of the best universities in the country? Certainly. It's quite good. What, what are you studying? I'm studying history. Wow. Wow, and you're in history event. You're in a history event. <laughs> How does it feel? To yeah, be in it's one? really history. We are making our history now, and it's a very crucial time now. It's changing point in history. I think what happens now will uh, the history. The future depends on what is going on now. So we have to be very reactive because. Our life, that's going to be uh, in future, it depends on what's going on now. So it's really a historical time. Yeah, this is so, what this gentleman, what was your name? Vitaly. Vitaly was warning about this, that glass door right there. Um, because there's an air siren that if a Russian shell hits, uh, the fragments would hit us and we would be injured or killed. And man, when I was going through school, I didn't have to worry about this. <laughs> we were worried about where to get alcohol.
<laughs> but you didn't have war in your country. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, this is one of the most fashionable shawleries you can find in Lviv. Wow. And all of the buildings here are connected. Mm. What is this? Oh, this is a water pump. Waters, that's for water purifying. Yeah. Wow. You got some, are these some families too or all students? Yeah, we've got, we also got families. Oh, okay, refugees as well. Yep. Man, this is, was this newly built? Uh, not really, I think it's about 10 years old. Oh, what was it, what was the original purpose? Uh, I don't really know, I guess. Why do they build? Why do they build this? Yeah. It's the shelter, I think. Uh, but it was built ten years ago. What was the original purpose of building? Of building of all building? Of this, no. of the, this underground. Shelter. I guess still a shelter. Wow. So you had just had to. You were preparing for this. Yeah. Yeah. I think in every European country they had shelters uh, oh, in every house. Oh, uh, okay, okay. This is just a European. Okay. And this is still. We're still. And this is IT space. Oh, uh, okay. So this is where people do their homework. Oh, are you a volunteer? Uh, no, I'm a, well, I, 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 I'm a storyteller. Oh, storyteller? Yeah. Okay. Jimmy. Journalist? And from the moment it started to change, we have a lot of relatives from Mariupol, who are now practically destroyed. On the day we came, my dad from Mariupol, who were able to get out of here. And to look at them now, it's very hard and painful to look at their eyes, which they have been in the past year, they have been in the past year. Смотрите, как взрослый мужчина плачет от того, что он видит свежий хлеб. Это очень тяжело смотреть на человека, который потерял э, все свое прошлое. У него больше нет места, где он прожил эти 50 лет, где он работал 50 лет своего прошлого, стерли с лица земли. И это мой дядя, родной, которого я знаю всю жизнь. И я смотрю, насколько ему тяжело больно, и тут невозможно не сочувствовать. Uh, mental health. Mental health is absolutely different. For example, my brain has blocked uh, a lot of emotions because I was before the war I was really emotional, emotional uh, about sadness to show and uh, everyone could see this. But now, uh, for example, yesterday I just uh, my. Uh, two of my friends left. left. They have left. Uh, they left uh, Lviv, and now they're in, uh, in Poland. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I understand that in a peaceful time I would cry. Okay, in a peaceful time you would cry because your friends have left, but now. And, uh, uh, I understand that uh, I won't see them for long. Yeah. This war won't uh, end at about uh, maybe a month or two now. It's uh, the new reality in which we live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in peaceful time you would have cried, but now you you don't process You have you're, It's shut off. That part of you is shut off. Yeah, I, I just can't. I understand that I won't, but uh, from physical part, I can't. Die. I see. Насправді я дуже хвилююся за нього, за мого тата, за дідуся і бабусю, які зараз знаходяться на повній території. І, бо я знаю випадки, коли у мого, моїх друзів вже батьки забирали російські спецслужби і зараз тримали деякий час, можливо, тримають у полоні, щоб отримати якусь собі вигоду з цього. Змусити до чогось, і я дуже хвилююся за своїх батьків і за те, як вони за свого тата, за те, як вони там. І я знаю, що там є проблеми з газом, з відпаленням, з трохи проблеми є з їжею. Але я сподіваюся, що Україна скоро переможе і все буде добре. Окей, це все.
Поэтому все тут пытаются делать каждое, что может. Кто-то волонтерит, кто-то помогает, сортирует, носит. По мере сил каждый пытается сделать хоть что-то. А больше всех, наверное, делают сейчас ребята, которые на передовой, которые стоят и держат города до последних, когда 90% города нет, а они до сих пор стоят. Это на самом деле герои, которые еще будут уважать на поколение вперед. What is this stuff? What is this stuff? Uh, this is a masking net. Yeah. We uh, we like we make them for our soldiers, so the tanks or the like their automobiles are masked, and you can't see them from the drone or something. This is a slug at Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this is also a way of Ukrainian meditation, so that's what we do. That's the idea. Are you proud of your students? Yeah, of course. I'm proud of my students, I'm proud of my army, I'm proud of my country and of now a nation. We're making the great, uh, the great things for the whole Western world now. If someone thinks that Putin is fighting against Ukraine, no, he's fighting against Western world. Absolutely. So if someone have any kind of uh, illusion that he will, if, if Ukraine will fail, that he will stop in Ukraine, Poland, Moldova, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia will be the next. And then maybe, maybe Finland and, and all the rest of the countries will be under his influence. So we're fighting for the freedom of many, many, many nations here. ніякого меседжу. Я просто хочу, щоб люди про це знали. Що мене не треба визволяти. Мене не треба визволяти від нормального життя. Мені треба просто жити спокійно в Україні. Now, as a business, um, as a business and leadership specialist, I'm sure you uh, have some insight in, on the Russian propaganda. How do you, how could we um, how could the West challenge the Russian propaganda so that the Russian people can be free from um, being for brainwashed now, by For people? now, it's too late. They brainwashed already. You could change, you could not change something which was happening for the last 30 years. You cannot change with, by, uh, by a few weeks. Uh, I think main thing now is a demontage of, uh, of Putin's regime. And, uh, And we have to do something as um, something that was done to uh, Nazi Germany in 1945. So pretty much go in and just take over. That's um, the only solution. Yeah, or by the military force or by some kind of economical or maybe Putin would, would be killed by some agents. I don't know. But uh, all these propaganda guys, all this, you know, Solovyov, Kiselev and all these people, they are supposed to be in the court and they are supposed to get their sentences the same as they're actually playing role of Hebels. So they should be treated as it was like, you know, this uh, old Nazi uh, guys was treated in, uh, in Nuremberg. So that's something which is supposed to happen with them. So there needs to be a Nuremberg trial for the uh, yeah, Russian leadership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? I would do this trial in Mariupol. That would be fair enough. I that think. would be fair. So this city, uh, is supposed to be the city where all this guy would have the tribunal and some of them suppose I think that some of them supposed to get their death sentence and some like Solovyov or Kiselov they couldn't get their 20 30 years in prison that would be fine with me mm -hmm. so and then we need to start all this what what they're calling the nazification this is actually what 
they supposed to start in, 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 in Russia? They, I mean, or liberal politics who could get the power after some revolution in Russia, which I still don't believe too much in that, or with some administration with, which could be placed after the Putin's death or his capture, or, or I don't know. Yeah. Do you, do you guys see this after the alarm is over? Is that what, it, what happens? Uh, the guy from uh, loudspeaker say about that, and we have our phone. Uh, oh, you have a signal. About that. Yep. Notification. Like, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. Alarm, end of alarm, then like start, and then so, like, uh, four okay. or five alarms a day. Four or five alarms <laughs> yeah, a day. Yeah. And do you guys feel uh, you guys? And you guys are used to it. Uh, yes, we're used to it, uh, but. We try to hide every time uh, as much as possible because okay. we understand that um, Russians can bomb civilians, can bomb uh, civilians like uh, objects, and it's like really dangerous uh, to be for us outside. When it's, uh, but it's our life. We <laughs> have to study with that, or like we have to live with that, like our life regular life. Do you have any messages for your students, um, people of your school? Yeah, guys, you are cool. Just continue to do the same things. Don't forget that you have to study still, <laughs> because you are the students. And I know that some of you would like to kill Russians. This is the job of our army. If you want to, <laughs> to kill someone, so you need to go to army. If you're a student, you can definitely help to your army, but still the main thing that you have to do, the, your main job is study, study in the university to get the great profession and to, uh, to earn money to support Ukrainian economy. But if someone would like to go to army, so great. This is the way you can help your country as well. Oops. What about a message, final message to the world? Um, help us because we're not saving ourselves we're saving all the western world help us with a weapon if you cannot close the sky give us the planes give us the missiles and we will close the sky by ourselves as you can see we can fight we are good in fighting so please help us and uh, and believe me it will be paid back we will we will finish this guy you know we will finish with the putin but we need your support so guys please we need your support all righty thank you so much andrew oh no problem мене немає ніякого меседжу я просто хочу сказати що нас не визволяють і ніколи не визволяли нас просто хочуть покрити і знищити і знищити Знищити нашу само, самосвідомість, нашу єдність. Зробити те, що взагалі Росія робила століття, сторіччям. Якщо... Так вона не змогла це розробити. Та я вважаю, що не зможе і зараз. Але просто люди, вони повинні розуміти, що... Що те, що зараз чиниться, це майже геноцид. Тому що йде повне скорінення, викорінення української 
15. Збукуюсь. Все. Thank you so much.